Hey, welcome back again. I'm here working on the Soul Brown and Sharp milling machine again, and I got the vertical spindle out because the adjustment on the Timken bearings were out. And uh, let's have a look at it. It's kind of a, an old time way they did it, the way they uh, retained the uh, bearing nut. And uh, let's have a look at that. It's kind of it's kind of neat. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get you all tilted down here, right in the action. Whoa! Almost there. I might be too close. Let's try this. A little closer. Oh, here we go. Right in that notch right there. I think, yeah, that looks pretty good. I think you can see what's going on here. Okay. Now, there's too much play in this, um, in the Timken variance in this vertical sp spindle unit here. And you can see here that's easily a couple of thousands. And that's way too much for uh, type zero Timken bearings. So, what we're going to do, I'll, I'll take this off here and. Uh, Get that like that. Ooh, just move this away. I tell you, this indicator is kind of in a precarious position. I put a safety cord on it because I almost dumped it on the ground. And I'm hoping you can see this. Now, <clears throat> this nut, this is the retaining nut for the uh, Tamkin bearings. And what happened is, is they used this um, uh, just a punch mark. Like a like the center punch mark to uh, put a nick in this washer to catch the edge of of the nut here. Okay, maybe you can see it there. I'm gonna dig some of that junk out of there. I'm trying to clean all this up real good. Okay, so what I gotta do is I'm gonna I made this little chisel right here. Nope, that's the punch. Oh, there it go. Here it is right here. This is an ugly tool. Little tiny chisel there. Very sharp. It'll, it'll shave my fingernail. And if I can find it, I've got a little hammer somewhere here. Oh, it fell down on the floor, of course. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get right above that and just start smoothing that off. See? Where they raised up that metal. Micro chisel. Now, if you're real good with a chisel, you can take a cape chisel and some other chisels and key a shaft in place in a sawmill. <laughs> yeah, I got a good sawmill story. I'll tell you while I'm doing this. <clears throat> I worked up north. And then I worked with this old guy that taught me a lot of things I'm going to show you, and maybe already have. He's a Navy machinist. And the one thing he would not show me is how to port um, Babbitt bearings. And this guy was a master Babbitt bearing uh, pour. And this is no kidding. I'm not kidding you. They're up where I was, up north of here, there's probably four or five sawmills. And they had these old-time uh, planers, you know, in the sawmills. And uh, they used Babbitt bearings. And he was the only guy that could do it. He wouldn't show me or anyone else how to do it. And I mean, that's severe for Babbitt bearing. You gotta be good. Big planers, you know. Sawmill planers. Well, what happened, he didn't show anybody and he died. And all those sawmills had to buy new planers. <laughs> And I think they're, you know, they're tens of thousands of dollars. But that's what happened. And sometimes these old timers uh, didn't want to teach you anything or much of anything. And so a lot of the things I got were pretty hard pried out of those guys. And I hope you young people can appreciate some of that. It wasn't that easy. <laughs> okay, how are we looking? Ah, I'm looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go to this side. It didn't look like they punched it, but it's kind of got a skid there. It feels pretty good. 
Okay, this one has a, the next one has a punch mark. And I'm going to do the same thing, okay? Just going to try to make sure I got my edge on there. I had it backwards. There, I can take that uh, raised metal away with this uh, little tiny chisel I made. Micro chisel. I'll tell you what I'm going to do real quick. Hold on. Need to touch that tape up a little bit. Yeah, there's my edge. Yeah. Got to keep a stone with you. Oh, look at that. I'm going to get that real sharp. Oh, very sharp. Okay. That's all it took. It's sharp. See, I'm knocking against that hard steel nut. Oh, didn't mean to bump your head. Okay. That did it. Now, all I got to do is I want to try to kind of knock it back. There's not much for metal in there. Let me see here. I got this kind of wet paper towel here. See, make sure I get all the little bits of metal. Just like that. I'm going to kick this around down to the bottom. Okay, I think we're pretty good there. I don't think I got anything. Now I'm going to take this really expensive screwdriver, and I, this is the best way to do it. I'm going to give it a couple of knocks. I don't know if I need to hold the spindle uh, solid. I don't think so. I got a, I got a mark right there. Okay. Let's see what this uh, marks look like over here. Okay. Let's give her a little tighter. Okay. Oh, that feels better. Yeah, that feels better. Now, these are type 0 Temkin bearings. And uh, you're not really, I, I don't, you're not really supposed to put a load on them. Now, it's impossible under this situation because these are greased. And um, what I had to do was I purged this with grease. And that's why I was running this so long, because uh, I wanted it to uh, push the grease out and quit getting hot. So I, I ran it until it just started warming up. Okay. And, and that's the point when you can start adjusting these bearings. And this not, might not be the first time. Okay. Okay, I'm going to get the indicator on there real quick. Now I actually have the indicator on the uh, on this spindle, so I'm not getting you know real bad readings. Okay, let's see what that looks like. This is a tenth indicator. Uh. Wow, that's pretty good. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little more, just a little more. And uh, when I run this spindle, after you do this, you got to run the spindle at the slowest speeds for a while, like an hour. And then you slowly start speeding it up. And if it gets hot, then you know you got to um, back it off. Okay? And I got a mark here of where it was, and I can see it's a bit ahead. And I think that's probably a good place to stop. Just just how it feels. It feel, it feel. I think it feels good. But I, but I'm gonna have to run it in. I don't think it's on there. Let's get it uh, settled down here. Ugh. Looks like a couple of tenths. And I'm going to call it good right there. And uh, so what we'll do now is um, I'm, instead of that uh, punch, I'm going to use that uh, the little uh, tool I made here. If I didn't lose it, I got it. I got it right here. And I'm going to and I'm going to raise that metal up right here where it hadn't been raised up before. 
Yeah. I can see I'm getting it. Just like I think right there. Yep. I think that's better than a punch mark because it, it gets in there a little bit better. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do it on this side. Yeah, I can see it. I think this will be a lot better than that center punch uh, mark they did 80 years ago. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get this spindle back installed. I'm getting very close to getting this mill up and running. And thanks, everybody. You are... Uh, Given, you're, you're like my cheerleading team on this. I'm really getting more done. Okay, thanks everybody for looking. I'll load this and I got some more to say on this mill, so I'll be back.